So it's been about four months now since uh, we moved into the house and um, what we had expected to be maybe a six week project uh, to get the basement ready uh, has, well let's just put it this way, we're still not quite finished but we're within sight of the finish line. Um, I think we've got uh, just a little bit of baseboard trim to install, some molding around the, a couple of doors. Um, and that's basically about it. Uh, a little bit of touch-up paint and that's it. And uh, we've got a renter. Um, we found somebody that we like and they're moving in at the end of this month. So yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty excited. So we're, we're um, I think we're finally in business. Um, it's just a bummer that it's taken as long as it has, but uh, it's basically, um, yeah, it's basically done, and I'm glad, because this has sucked, honestly. Um, if I had known that it was going to take this long and cost this much money and be this difficult, I would have seriously considered... Um, passing on the house, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I love it here. I love this house. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's been, it's been frustrating. So, it's nice to be pretty much done. But, uh, yeah, so we're, we're, we're basically done, and, uh, which is a good timing, because we just got hit with the, uh, first major snowfall of the year. Um, surprisingly early. Um, I mean, last year we had a minor snowfall in September, but, you know, it melted pretty quick and we didn't get hit again until probably into November. Um, but yeah, this year we had a minor snowfall last week and now a pretty heavy one again today. Uh, it's supposed to be nice again next week, so it's probably going to be gone within a couple of days, but um, I was out for a walk in it today and it was a trudge. Um, yeah, we ended up with about four inches, about ten centimeters uh, here and there. And um, one thing I learned is I don't like shoveling snow from the sidewalk. Never had to do that before. Um, it's exhausting. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not too enthusiastic about having to do that again. Probably six or eight or ten more times this winter. You know, it didn't take that long. It took me less than half an hour, but it was exhausting. Um, it's a lot of work. And it's heavy. But it got done. You know, whatever. Um, so, that's pretty much uh, what's been going on with the house. Uh, other than that, uh, I've kind of just been trying to work on um, I've been going for walks a lot lately. Uh, as I said, I was out for a walk today in the snow because I haven't been for one in several days and I kind of have a goal set for every week that I've been trying to meet. And I've been pretty pretty spot on um, for my target for uh, uh, pretty much every week since I've been doing it. And I'm proud of myself. Um, but it's been, it's been tough to motivate myself to get out to do that. So I'm proud of myself for getting out to do that today, especially um, especially for being out there suffering in the, uh, in the cold and snow and trudging through, you know, four inches of crusty snow and ice on the sidewalk that hasn't been cleared by anybody else except for like one or two of my neighbors who are out there working. So yeah, I felt like kind of obligated to get mine done. Um, but it looks good. I'm happy to have it done. And uh, it was... Uh, I'll, I'll probably get better at it as uh, as the season goes by, but it was not a fun thing to have to do for the first time. <laughs> but, eh, whatever. Um, but part of the reason I bring up going for walks is because one of the places that I walk to probably twice a week is uh, the local mall. Uh, it's called Kingsway Mall. It's about two and a half... If I walk directly there, it's about two and a half kilometers, so... 25, 30 minute walk. Um, I usually add a little bit of distance um, just to, you know, get a little bit more walking in. But I try to do that two to three times a week. 
And there's a hobby shop in that mall uh, that I've mentioned, I believe, on, on one or two videos in the past called Comex Hobby. Um, there's one at Kingsway and there's one at West Edmonton Mall. And uh, I try to go to the one at Kingsway fairly frequently. Um, and they've generally got a pretty good, a pretty good selection of um, Gundam kits and other sci-fi stuff. Mostly a lot of um, some Mobius kits, like there's some of their Battlestar Galactica stuff, some Pegasus hobbies, um, uh, I see a few of their uh, uh, Terminator 2 kits, like their Hunter Killers, which I kind of want to build one or two of those because they'll just look neat, um, but haven't gotten around to it, uh, to taking a look at those yet. Um, but uh, mostly what I've been looking at uh, f uh, from there lately is uh, r um, Round 2's Star Trek reissues uh, of the old AMT slash Ertl stuff from way back in the day. Because, um, you know, love Star Trek. Some of the first videos I ever did on this channel. Pro in fact, probably most of the first year of this channel was just doing uh, Star Trek kits from uh, Polar Lights and um, old Ertl stuff and stuff like that. A few uh, original issue kits. My runabout was an original AMT Ertl kit. Um, and yeah, you know, once upon a time I had a, a, a master plan. I wanted to build every Starship Enterprise, and I did most of them. I think the only one that I didn't ever do was the Enterprise B. Um, and I do have a kit of it, I just never got around to building it. Um, but it's also the Round 2 reissue, I believe in 1400th scale, and um, I'm not sure where it is, I think it's in the garage someplace. But um, I've kind of been buying up uh, kits here and there when I can find them on sale or uh, for basically not too much money, and typically they sell for about $20, $20-$25 Canadian. Um, and I've amassed a bit of a, I'll admit, a bit of a stockpile of them over the last uh, couple of months. Uh, granted, I've, ha I've had a couple of these for a while. Um, you know, probably for a few years, in fact. I think a couple of these followed me from uh, back in Victoria. Uh, they came out when my parents brought out my uh, uh, most of my stuff. Um, so, yeah, those are... Uh, a couple of them I probably looked at already in the past, but I went looking through uh, my channel, but I can't find any evidence that I ever reviewed them, so we're going to take a look at them here. And we're going to start in chronological order, more or less. Um, not of release date, but of first appearance in the fiction. Uh, and first off is the Enterprise herself. This is the uh, classic Polar Lights 1 1,000th scale kit, which was originally released, I want to say, in around 2003. Um, I've built this thing about four times in uh, various, to various degrees of uh, authenticity. Um, the first one, just a basic snap together. Actually, most of them probably just basic snap together. Um, yeah, at least three or four times I think I've, I've done this. And then finally, back in, I want to say, 2009, uh, I did a build-up series uh, on this channel of this kit with the uh, Klingon uh, D7. I did them both uh, side by side, um, and neither of those kits unfortunately survived the move uh, from my condo. They ended up uh, both getting destroyed, which was a shame because they were really I really enjoyed building those and I was really proud of them. Um, but uh, I'm eager to uh, tackle this thing again because this is the new, uh, the latest reissue. Uh, I believe from 2012 or 2013, this is the uh, the Botany Bay Space Seed Edition. It includes Khan's uh, sleeper ship from that episode, Space Seed. Um, and I believe the Enterprise herself has some minor retooling. Uh, so that's the first one that we're going to look at. Uh, next one up is also from TOS. And I believe this is an original kit. I don't think this is a reissue or a retooling of anything. This is uh, Round 2 slash Polar Lights, Romulan Bird of Prey, as first seen in the episode Balance of Terror. 
Um, I can't find any evidence on the packaging as to whether or not this is an original kit or a retooling uh, of something or a reissue of anything. Um, I haven't really done any digging around on the internet, but I took a brief glance through the box and it looks really basic, uh, like the kind of thing that will probably take, I could probably knock it out in about three or four days. Um, but uh, it looks like a fun, quick little build, so I'm, uh, I'm pretty eager to uh, take a look at that. Next up, uh, we're already moving into the movie era. Um, another version of the Enterprise herself, the uh, Refit uh, 1701. No bloody A, B, C, or D. No, this is the original uh, ship as it appeared circa uh, TMP uh, and the first half of um, Wrath of Khan prior to getting its butt kicked by uh, Khan and the Reliant. Um, now this kit is, uh, I believe was originally released in, I want to say around 2009, 2010. I built one once um, when they first came out, just did a basic assembly. I never got around to doing anything more fanciful to it. But I remember it being a fun kit. It was a good build, um, really, really simple, um, but a better overall build than uh, Polar Light's uh, TOS Enterprise. The fit was better. Um, overall, the design was just a better, uh, uh, better put together. But um, this version includes all the extra decals for the Aztec markings for the saucer, secondary hull, nacelles, everything. So this is one of those things you can either paint it and do the Aztec yourself, you can leave the aztec off entirely, or you can decal it. Um, and it pretty much requires very little paint uh, if you choose to Aztec it uh, with the, uh, the included uh, markings. Um, I never did I never did it with when I did the original version or when I, when I built this thing years ago because eh didn't, wasn't really feeling it because I've had other projects on the go and I hate water slide decals I always have. Um, so yeah, I just kind of sat on a shelf and I never really did anything with it. But it is a nice kit and I'm eager to, uh, to tackle it because uh, the next up is her rival, the Reliant, as seen in Star Trek II. Uh, also from Polar Lights, and I'm pretty sure uh, Round 2 slash Polar Lights. Also a Snap Fit kit, and this one almost definitely a completely new tooling. Uh, I don't believe there was ever... Um, I don't believe there was ever a version of the Reliant in this scale ever released. In fact, I think the only other model of the Reliant ever made was AMT's old, uh, I believe, 537th scale uh, that matched up with the uh, the original refit Enterprise that was originally released for the motion picture uh, and then re-released for every subsequent um, Kirk era movie. But uh, yeah, uh, this I'm pretty sure is a brand new kit, probably released circa 2012 or uh, oh 2014. So very new. Um, does not include the Aztec decals uh, like the Enterprise does. However, there is an option set that you can pick up, and I did order a set, and they're not here yet, and I'm really grumpy at that fact um, because yeah paid for, or I, I was suckered into paying for first class shipping uh, from, I believe I got it from Cult TV Man, uh, the, from their web store, and, um, you know, no fault to them, I, you know, I'm just grouchy at the post office because it's been like 10 days, and it's basically being sent in a letter, so why is it taking this long? It's coming from Florida, sure, but it left before the hurricane got there, um, I don't know why it's taken this long, but yeah, it's been like 10 days and it's still not here. It's been in Vancouver, uh, according to the tracking information, for like three days. So, what the hell? I don't get it. Um, moving on. Um, next up is also in the 1 to 1,000 scale uh, range. This is the uh, their 
very, very new. I think this was only released just a few weeks ago. This is the uh, reissue of The Great Experiment, the USS Excelsior. Um, I built the Excelsior back, I want to say, in 91 or 90... No, it must have been 92, because we were living in the new... in the house my parents currently live in, which um, we moved into in 92. So, yeah, I would have built it in 92, or it might have even been 93. Um, and that was one of my favorite models I ever built back in those days. Um, now, I'm not the hugest fan of the Excelsior class design, but I really enjoyed building that model because... I really put all my effort, all my energy into it, and it turned out really well for, you know, something done by a 12, 13 year old kid with a couple of paint brushes and not a lot of skill. Um, so I wish I still had it, but um, unfortunately I don't. Now, the original molds for this Excelsior, and I'll go into a little more detail when I, un when I do a proper unboxing of this thing. The original molds for that model were irreparably modified to represent the Enterprise B uh, as it appeared in Star Trek Generations when that model was released in about 1994. So round two had to basically rebuild the tooling for this thing from the ground up. I actually tried to do an unboxing of this kit about a month ago and my footage all got corrupted. So I was really upset about that. Um, so I've already cracked this thing open and taken a look at it, and it is a very, very nice uh, retooling, and I'm very excited to take a closer look at it. Um, but, yeah, um, that's going to be... I'll talk at greater length about it during its own video, but um, it's a nice-looking kit of mm, one of my least favorite Federation starships, unfortunately. But, anyway... Um, Finally, now we're getting away from the uh, one one thousandth scale and going to uh, box scale, I guess. Um, the next two, uh, the next two models were actually originally released as a three pack. The uh, uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation Adversaries set, um, the Klingon Bird of Prey, Ferengi Marauder, and uh, Romulan Warbird. Um, all three are just pure box scale kits. Uh, there's no there's no rhyme or reason for how they're scaled. In fact, the uh, uh, I did some I did some measurements, and the bird of prey is about thirteen fortieth scale, so it would match well with a uh, the fourteen hundredth scale uh, Enterprise D or um, Enterprise E or any of the other fourteen hundred scale kits. Whereas the uh, the Romulan Warbird is advertised on the box at 3200th, so that one's way off. But the one that really takes the cake is the Ferengi Marauder, which I did the math out. I think it came out to like 166,000th, um, which, yeah, considering that the model itself is about this long, <laughs> is kind of comical how, uh, how absurdly small. Um, they made that ship, considering that within the context of the series, it's pretty large. Uh, Ferengi ships are pretty big. Um, but, like I said, these were all originally released as a, uh, a single pack set um, way back in around 1988 or 89, uh, in the early days of TNG. Um, and it was the first time that a Bird of Prey model was ever available. And the only time uh, that a Ferengi or Romulan uh, Warbird were ever made available. And as far as I know, they're just straight reissues. There is no retooling or anything, though I believe they all have uh, new markings. So, at least that'll help to update them a little bit. And uh, last up, uh, again, is uh, more of a box scale than uh, accurate, uh, realistic scale. But this is the uh, Deep Space Nine set. Um, from uh, what they call from their Cadet series. So uh, they're advertised as 2500 scale, but um, again, I did a little bit of math, mostly on the Defiant, because this includes the, uh, uh, the Defiant, um, the Saratoga, which was 
uh, Ben Sisko's ship during the Battle of Wolf 359, the Borg invasion as seen in Best of Both Worlds and the pilot of Deep Space Nine, and a Cardassian Galore class warship. Now I don't know the actual sizes of those two. Uh, I probably should have looked it up. I'll look it up when I do their actual unboxings. Um, but the uh, the Defiant I worked out is not 2500th scale, absolutely. Now there is some debate over the actual size of the Defiant, but the most consistent number I've been able to find is 110 meters long, which would make this kit, uh, which is three and a half inches long, would be around 1900th scale. Um, to be the actual 2500th scale would have to be about two and a half ish inches long. So, um, yeah, actually that's everything. Um, so I'm going to be uh, doing these in, one at a time, uh, unboxing each of them one at a time, kind of like I've done with uh, um, everything else that I've done recently, releasing one video a day or, you know, every other day as I get around to it um, over the next eight days, I guess. Was there eight kits here? Eight or nine days? Um, until I work my way through all of these. And I might add one or two um, as time comes. And hopefully before I get the, uh, the Reliant video posted, I'll finally have those decals in hand. And I can do a supplemental segment uh, just tacked on at the end of that video um, uh, when I finally get them. So, yeah. Um, that's going to be... Uh, those are going to be coming out over the next, uh, yeah, the next week or ten days or so. Um, so do hang around for those. Um, eager to, uh, I mean, especially eager to take a look at the reissue TOS Enterprise, because, yeah, I'm exp I, I know enough about that model that I'll be able to spot pretty much any retooling pretty quickly, because I've built that thing several times, and I know it pretty well. Um, so I'm eager to see what's, uh, what's different about it. So uh, thanks everyone out there for watching. Happy modeling.